Hey guys, in React there are two ways to write components. The one is called class components, which you write by extending the React component objects. And the second kind is functional ES6 components. They are much easier to write compared to the class components. So we're gonna look at the syntax of each, uh, the pros and cons, and which one to use where. And by the way, if you're not following the entire series, you can do so, I'll provide a a link here. This is the React series I'm talking about from the start to finish. And welcome to Texas Tutorials. All right, let's just start by creating a new project using Create React App. React App slash the name of the new project. So I'm going to say react dash class versus ES6 components. All right, so it has created the project. Now I'm going to just cd into the project react uh, class versus ES6 component. And let me clear it and open it into Atom. The first thing I'm going to do is just I'm going to remove all the garbage from the app.js so we can start working i should also remove the logo from here and now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create two components one which is class component and the second would be your es6 functional component so let's start with the class component so it's in the source folder i'm going to create a new folder called users and inside the users let's create a new component a new file called users.js all right because it's a class-based component we're gonna extend it using the react components so we need to import the component library so let's say import react and component component from react and since it's a class-based component we have to say class uh, the name of the component is users extends uh, this component all right and once you create a class we need to export it so it would say export default users and inside the class uh, there's only one method called render so it would say render and inside I'm just gonna return um, a div all right so I have my class component and I'm gonna include this in my app.js. So if I go in app.js, I have to now import that component. So I would have to say import uh, users from, now it's gonna be from users folder. So I'm gonna say users slash users because we don't use JS. It automatically understands because it's a component. And just so we have imported it, we can use it as, an, uh, as a tag inside. So I can say uh, users, and that should do it. Now let's compile the project and see how it works. I should go back to the command line. I would say npm start, and that should compile the project and open it onto uh, a port 3000. All right, so now I can see that test. So it's working. So that's I, I have a habit of just you know doing a little test as I go along so I know if working with, with uh, before writing too much code. And if you're new to React, uh, just understand that when you write a component, <clears throat> you wanna make sure that, because it's a custom component, you wanna make sure that it's capitalized. So, so it can differentiate between regular HTML tags. So here, let's say if I had a component called, a custom component called div, then I can write something like this and it, it would know that this is actually a custom component compared to this is a div tag which is an HTML tag uh, which is native. Also another important thing to notice is that if I have only one line here I can just write it like this but if I have multiple lines let's say if I were to do something like this then I would need to do this. Another important thing is uh, to remember is that you only want to have one main parent tag inside a component. So here I have only div. I do not want to do 
this. Now I have two tags inside. Now let's say if I render it, if I save it, let's see what happens. I would get an error saying that uh, must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. So that's what basically say it needs only one tag. I'm, I'm having two parent tags right now. So that's why it's giving you error. Some browsers, they're a little bit flexible, they allow it, but I would recommend just having one tag. And this would enclose all the other tags inside. Now let's create our ES6 functional component. Now this component would be a subcomponent to this user's component. So we're gonna have a component name user, which be which would be one of the users in user's component. So for that, I'm just going to create a new file inside the users called user.js. Now you can have a JS or a JSX file, it's fine but the new convention is just to use JS, even if you're writing JSX inside. All right, so here we're not gonna extend, it's just gonna be pure function, but we still need to import React. So I would say import React from React, and that we have to do. And we're gonna write a pure function, so the name of the function is going to be user, but before that, let's de define it as a const so we are we can mutate it but we cannot replace the entire thing so we're gonna say user equal to and let's write as an error function and unlike the class component we don't have to have a render function we can just simply return the jsx so i would say uh, return and I'm gonna say div user slash div. So it's very simple. Uh, however, I still have to export it because it's a module. I have to import something and export something. So I would say export default user. And let's use this component inside the users. So inside the users, I still have to import it. So I say import users, user from user. So now I can use this tag inside the users component. So instead of test, I would simply say user here. So now let's see what it renders. All right, it has uh, rendered the, the user tag inside. Now, if I want to have multiple users, I would simply do this. And it would be reused. Okay, now I have four users. But these are still very static. We need to put some content so we can make it dynamic. So in order to make it dynamic, let's pass a name of the user. So I'm going to do something like this. Inside, I would pass a value of the user name so the name would be here let's say John Jill and let's say Peter okay now if I render it it still says users because even though I passed it it doesn't the the user component still doesn't know that I have passed it so I have to let it know and use it inside the user so if I pass anything like this as a content in an element or component inside the user I can I can use it as a prop because it's automatically available as a prop so in a function component you have to explicitly pass uh, props here and now this prop would have a property called children which would be nothing but this name here so I can say props dot children, uh, but I have to use it inside the curly bracket so that sort of like interpolation. So now if I look at it, it is rendering John, Jill, and Peter. So when I use a functional component, I have to use props. However, inside the class component. I automatically have that property that props 
So here, if I want to pass something to users, which I can do it through app.js here, I can have a property called title equal to, let's say, users list. And so inside the users, I don't really have to pass the props. I can simply use this as, let's add um, a title here. So in inside the div, I am going to have an h to h1 tag, this dot props dot title, which means whatever I'm passing through, I grab that title from the. Now I have a, a title called users list. Similarly, I can pass properties into the each user. Let's try age equal to, let's say, 20, 30, and 40. Jill is 30, and Peter is 40 years old. But still, it won't show up here because I still need to use it inside the user. So I would go inside the user, and here I would say, um, say, name, space, and age, space, or I can use a pipe here so that it looks more presentable. And age would be props.age. All right, so if I go back to the users list, I have name, which is John, and age is showing up. By the way, if you're still enjoying the video, uh, please take a few seconds and like the video because most of the users don't go all the way to the end. So just a reminder. And if you do like it, thank you. All right, so the next thing is, what if I just wanna, what if somebody passes just this without the age? So we can fix it inside the user. And here we can write some logic so that we know that it doesn't have age, so don't display it. So here I would say, uh, let age equal to, let's say props.age is invalid if valid then props.h use na and instead of props.h I can use this constant age so now if I go here I would have na also if there is no if I don't pass the the name here then there is no point of even having a user right so let's say if I remove this completely then there's no point of actually showing this user. So I can go here and I can say props.children, then if they are children, then do this else, return invalid entry or something. Well, in, in your practical application, that would be a little bit better solution than this, but for now, we're just gonna use this. So now it's showing invalid entry. So let's recap the differences between the, the class component and, and ES6 function component. So obviously you don't have to, in the class component, you have to import component. And the ES6 component, you don't have to import, that, import it. Uh, class component, we are obviously extending the component to build a class. And ES6, you're just simply writing a function. Also, there's no render method here because it's only part of it class. Second thing is the props. Uh, in the components, in the class component, this prop is automatically available. ES6 function component, you have to pass as an argument, and then you can use props. And you don't have to do this dot props. And so where do I use class component and where do I use the ES6 uh, functional components? I would suggest use the ES6 function component as much as possible. However, whenever you want to maintain the state, you cannot use the functional components because we will look at in the next um, tutorial how the state works. But, but you can only use it in the class component. The function component doesn't have a way to actually define a state. So that is the one thing. If you need a container component, container component is like the top level component, which encloses all other components. Uh, that is usually written as a 
uh, class component. So here I have the users component, which is the top level component and user component, which is, I would more say it as a presentational component. In the next tutorial, we are going to look at states and props in React, which is very important. And you can follow that tutorial. I provide the link at the end of this tutorial. And I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And if you did, please um, like, subscribe, and provide a nice comment. Thank you.